this is experimental investigation number one in Novare Physical Science. This experiment is about kinetic energy, and it involves a lot of parts. It's the most complex experiment in the whole book, so it looks a little complicated, but it is the most complicated one. There are a number of parts in this experiment that are needed, jigs, I call them. Uh, we always recommend that students, if they have the opportunity, that they make the jigs themselves as part of the experimental enterprise. It's good for scientists, budding scientists. Scientists always have to make their own equipment or design it, so it's good for the students to get the hands-on if they can. However, we know that for many people, making wooden jigs or metal parts is not part of uh, what they can do, so we do sell a parts kit on our website that includes most of the specialty items that you'll see here. Also, the complete instructions for how to make the jigs yourself and for how to run the experiment are described in our resource manual, the experiment resource manual, which is available to any user of our textbooks and is also included in the resource CD. We want to uh, look at a kinetic energy and see how the kinetic energy of a moving object varies with the mass. So in this experiment, we're going to do that by using a Hot Wheels car where we can load in lead weights to make the car heavier and heavier, which will increase its kinetic energy. To measure the kinetic energy, we're going to allow the car to run down a track and come to rest underneath these friction flaps here which will bring it to a stop. The more kinetic energy the car has, the longer it will take to stop. To begin the experiment, we first set up two ramps side by side and take two cars and release them simultaneously so that students can uh, have confirmed in their mind that the two cars will always arrive at the bottom at the same time, no matter how heavy they are. So I'm just putting this extra piece of track in here and connecting it to this other clamp that I have side by side with the main one. And now by using two cars side by side, we can re release them repeatedly. Just let them go to the bottom. And do this a few times and let the students uh, get persuaded in their own mind that even heavier cars uh, will always reach the bottom at the same time as the lighter cars. So the variable that determines how far the car is going to go into the friction flaps is not how fast it's going. It's always going the same speed. What it makes the difference is how uh, heavy it is is going to make the difference on how far it goes in. Now let's talk about getting the track set up. Let me take this out of the way, and we'll come back to that in a moment. The main requirement for this track, I've used a 1 by 10 piece of wood for mounting the track. So this is the track clamp support base, putting this on the end of the track board, and then we need to clamp it down in place with a couple of clamps or you can glue it down. Once it's secure, then we use the Hot Wheels clamps that come with the Hot Wheels track on here. And this is what we'll attach the track to. Now we're ready for the track. And then just put the piece of track over the connector that's screwed to the board and then feed the track up onto the clamp. The, the key here is that we need to um, arrange the track so that this is fixed right here where the ramp ends. The, by itself the track isn't flexible enough and if you don't have it anchored down right here it'll just go down very gradually. So what I did was uh, take these connector pieces and actually screw them down to the wood at this uh, spot. The dimensions here for all of these measurements are in the resource manual. 
Now once these are screwed down so that they won't go anywhere, and you notice that the head of that screw, I used flathead wood screws so that they would sink down into the uh, plastic and not stick up, and that way when we attach the track, it'll, it'll, the screw will not be in the way. Now after we've done the initial part of the experiment, testing a couple of cars and releasing them at the same time, and verifying that they reach the bottom at the same time. Now we're ready to set up for the actual data collection. I might just mention that almost all of the experiments in this book are designed to actually take data and plot the data in tables or on graphs. It's not, a, it's not adequate, in my opinion, for students to just see an oh wow and call that a science experiment. I call that a demonstration. An experiment, you take data, you analyze the data, you interpret the data. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at how does the stopping distance of the car vary with the mass in the car. Stopping distance is a gauge of how much kinetic energy the car had. And we'll know the mass because we're going to measure the mass of the car by weighing it on the mass balance each time we increase the weight. Now, uh, on my track here, on this 1x10, where I've got my track, my Hot Wheels track, I've got a yardstick, or if you have a metric one, that's even better, a meter stick that you can tape down along the side of your track. If you're using a regular American yardstick, like I have in this video, uh, the measurements you make are going to be in inches, and that's fine, or, uh, or you can have the students convert the measurements into centimeters or meters. Now, this uh, device is uh, an adjustable support with screws that you can loosen and raise this up and down. These are used in this experiment and they're also used in the uh, magnetism experiment later in the book. With an extra piece of 1x4 here, I can set up this first set as close to the front as I can and put the second set way down here in the back. Now these are to support this apparatus which is the friction flaps. This is a one by two, six feet long and I've got these pieces of index card taped to it every quarter of an inch all the way down. To make the friction flaps Take a stack of 3 by 5 cards, mark lines every inch, and one down the middle. This will give you 10 flaps per card. 10 cards, that's 100 flaps. And then cut out the flaps. To put the friction flaps onto the stopping board, you can use a ruler. That way you can measure consistently how far up the flap the fold is. So by using the scale here, putting it on a quarter of an inch, and then I have an extra eighth of an inch hanging off, I can just fold the flap there real quickly. And now I have a flap that's got the same size of foot on it every time. And I can arrange this flap on this friction flap board, putting it right at the edge of the previous flap, and then tape it down with a piece of masking tape. So that took just a few seconds. There's a hundred of these to do, so that'll take several minutes. I left an inch and a half at the end here for supporting, and then I put the hundred flaps that I cut. This doesn't have to take forever. If I have a bunch of students cutting out index cards, it only takes a minute or two. And then just a few minutes to tape the flaps on. Now I'm going to position the friction flap assembly directly over the track and I'm going to use a couple of these small quick clamps that you can get at a hardware store to uh, hold it down. Got to make sure the clamp is not in the way of the car. You want to adjust the height using these uh, adjustment screws to be able to raise and lower the friction flaps. You want to adjust the height so that the car doesn't stop too quickly, but doesn't go flying off the end of the track either. Also, you may need to make minor adjustments after you've set it up and made a few runs so that you get some variation in the distance the car goes in. 
You don't want the car to stop right at the beginning here. You want it to go in a little bit, but after that you want it to begin gradually slowing down. And you can adjust the heights of the two ends independently to make sure you get variation uh, between how far the car goes when it's empty and how far it goes when it's full. That looks pretty good. At the, at the top of the track, I've taped a piece of card across the top to act as a barrier so that I can always start the car from the same spot so that we always are getting the same energy down at the bottom. Now, when we, when we begin taking data, what we need to do is record all the data in lab journals. Students need to have a lab journal. They need to set up a table for this experiment. One column is for masses. The other column is for the stopping distance. For each car mass, you need to run four or five trials so that you can get a good average on how far the car goes. Uh, record the stopping distance for each trial and call that and put all those stopping distances out beside the same mass. For this experiment, the Hot Wheels car we need to choose is one that's got a lot of cargo space because we're needing to pile a lot of weights in here so that the car will get heavier and heavier with the different trials. For the weights, we'll use these fishing sinkers that you can get at sporting goods shops in the fishing department. These are lead weights that we can pile in the car to add weight to the car so the open bed here allows that. After you get several weights in there, sometimes they may want to fall out, so it's kind of handy to take 10 or 12 of them and make a little packet out of them and tape it together. And that way, it, up, when you get weights up to about 10, then you can just put this in the car and they won't be falling out. So now we'll start collecting the data. So we'll begin with the empty car. First, we mass the car on the mass balance. This car weighs 29.4 grams. Record that mass in the lab journal. And now we're ready to go with the first set of trials. So we take the car, back it up to the starting gate, release it. And now use the front bumper of the car, measure how far it went, record that distance in the lab journal. With the same weight, do this four or five more times and record all of those stopping distances in the lab journal under that car mass. This is your first set of trials. Now, with this trial, we're going to have two weights, so we need to record a new mass. Now we're up to 30.4 grams for our second set of trials. And now we're going to run it again. Put the car in the same position, let it run. Write down the new stopping distance and do this one for four or five trials. And of course, average those stopping distances for each, set, uh, each group of trials for that particular mass. That can be the single stopping distance that goes with that mass, uh, the average. So we just keep repeating this until the car gets too much weight and can't perform properly anymore. In the experiment manual, I describe that this, um, in my experience, happens when the car is up to about 130% of its empty weight. At that point, the axles and wheels in the car uh, are starting to get too heavy and they don't perform properly. Once we plot the data of stopping distance, or rather, yes, stopping distance versus mass, we should see a linear relationship between the stopping distance and the mass. As the mass goes up, the stopping distance should go up too. Once we get the weight of the car up to about 130% of its empty weight, the stopping distance is not going to increase linearly after that. The car's stop uh, performance will be quite erratic. That's the end of this experiment. Hope you have fun. <laughs>